so we're going to go over secondary fault finding first with the A-frame. And um, uh, th something that's different between this versus a thumper unit is this is looking for a sheath to ground fault. It, it has to be ground faulted in order for this to find it. Whereas that over there is arcing between two conductors and whenever it arcs, it's giving you a footage to it. So if you're in conduit, you'd be able to find it with a machine like that versus this if it's buried in conduit or if it's, if it's just not making good ground contact because that's the type of fault it is, it's gonna be hard to find with this. Otherwise, this is gonna get you right down to the edge and it's fairly easy, but you gotta keep in mind is um, when you hook up to a cable using a secondary fault locator like this, what you're trying to do is complete a circuit. So you're throwing signal down that line with the red lead, and that does have to be hooked up correctly. Red lead on the wire, black lead to a ground rod. And what you're trying to do is throw a signal down that line, and then that signal's gonna bounce off the line where the fault is, ground out, come back through the ground, and get back to the ground rod and complete the circuit. So you, the ground rod itself has to be pretty good. You gotta have it in the ground quite a ways. You gotta make sure that uh, you're in good soil and get it off to the side of where you plan on going with the receiver and the A-frame. Because uh, otherwise, you're going to cause a lot of confusion because there's a big magnetic field around that ground rod. That ground rod is a fault in itself, which is balanced to the fault that's out on the line. They're both about the same. And, and as it's completing the circuit. And so after you get all hooked up and everything, you could take a reference reading with the A-frame <clears throat> right next to the ground rod. And if it reads, say, a 92 decibel reading, that means it probably should read around a 92 decibel reading out at the fault, if it's the only fault that's out there. If there's multiple faults, then they'll probably add up to read 92. So if you get to the first fault and it's only reading 20 some decibels, you're gonna probably keep on going and see if you can find another one that's much higher, something that's reading closer to 70 or 80 decibels. And so that's another uh, nice tool that you can use to verify if there's multiple faults, because if there's multiple faults, you may end up just wanting to replace the whole cable. But when you go to find a fault, all you have to do is hook up your red lead to the wire, black lead to the ground rod, and then turn on your transmitter. Now this is a three watt transmitter, but when you're in fault find mode, it's pushing out quite a bit of voltage. It's pushing out actually 90 volts of power. And so <clears throat> when you're in fault find mode, it automatically goes to zero output because it doesn't want somebody touching the end of the leads and getting shocked by that 90 volts. And so you want to go ahead and turn up your output. There's a bar graph up in the top left-hand corner telling you where your output is. And I'm at 20% right there at two bars, 40% at three bars and then 100% at four bars. There's no harm in throwing out 100% on a fault locate. It's just gonna cause you to pick it up easier with the receiver. And so I would go ahead and do that if you want to. You just gotta wear your batteries down faster. You know, and if you're in close proximity, if the fault's really close to the transformer here, you may not wanna turn it down a little bit. But <clears throat> for the most part on this one, we'll go ahead and go to 100%. Now this is running a lithium ion battery inside of it, so it's gonna last a long time versus alkalines. If you're running the alkalines, it's not going to last long at all because in fault find mode, you're using quite a bit more power than a regular locate mode where you're using 30 volts. But you can locate this line out first if you want to by using one of the fault find or one of the uh, locate frequencies, which is 512, 8, or 33. But say if it's already located out like this one is, we'll just go ahead and go to fault find mode, which is 8 kilohertz as well. But in fault find mode, you have a little A frame icon showing you that you're in fault find mode. So you go to the A-frame icon, eight kilohertz, and then you go ahead and turn it up all the way to 100%, and we're set to go. Our ground rod's good, it's making noise, letting me know that it's a completing a circuit, and we can go ahead and get, use our A-frame now. So on the A-frame, when you plug this in, um, it will set itself up automatically, so you don't have to uh, worry about what mode you're in. Just get it plugged in correctly, you'll hear it beep, you'll see the arrows show up on the screen, and you're already picking up decibel readings. Now, if you want to try to locate this as you're doing the fault finding, just hit the right button over here and it takes you to locate mode. And so we can pinpoint where it's at and then go ahead and just hit it a couple more times and you're back to A-frame mode. And you now you know where to plug in the A-frame. But you don't have to be directly over the wire when you're fault locating. You can be off to the side at you know, two, three, four, five foot if you want to. You know, sometimes there's a 
nice concrete side rock right where you want to be using the A-frame. Well, just get over to the good ground and get it, the biggest thing is if you want to get good ground contact with those spikes. And so you go ahead and follow it off to the side where you have good grass and just follow your arrows and then when your arrow flip flops then you worry about trying to pinpoint it a little bit more so um, but here we're we're over the top of the line here and I have an arrow showing me forward it's pointing out that way and I have a decibel reading reading about 57 decibels right now what's happening is remember that that ground rod over there is about the same decibel level as the fault down down the way here and the decibel level is going to start high like this and it, because it's still picking up the ground rod and then it's going to kind of plateau off once we get about halfway to the fault and then the decibel level will start to climb back up again. When you start to see it come back up, you want to lower your intervals. Right? You shorten the intervals up with your A-frame because you know you're getting closer to the fault. But right now we have a 57 decibel level. It's telling us to go forward. I want to keep the green leg of this A-frame always facing the same direction as the front of my receiver the red towards the back and so if I'm going to turn around I want to turn both of them around okay and if I plug it in this way it's still going to arrow still pointing me this the, the right direction but I just don't want to turn it independently I want to turn them together because they're one unit they have a little holster here that will holster it if you want to use one arm but I like to kind of hold on to it so I can use my other arm to kind of push down on it especially when there's frost in the ground so I got a 57 decibel reading. My arrow's pointing me to go forward. I'm gonna go ahead and probably go 10, 15 foot. And you can see we already have some red marks on the ground, so somebody's already located the path. But now I got a 43, 45 decibel reading. And it's still telling me to go forward, so I'm gonna go keep on going here. <laughs> What if you're off the locate? Is that gonna? It will the... cause the decimal reading to go up a little bit. Higher. Yeah. See, I got a 40, around a 40, 35 decimal reading. It's flipping around here. Arrow's still pointing that way, but the decimal reading's a little lower than the last one. If I go off to the side, higher. you see how I get a little higher. And so you want to try to be close to it, but if you can't get right over mm -hmm. the top of it, it's no big deal. You got the arrows to point you the right direction. And so I'm gonna keep on going here. Still telling me to go forward. I'm about the same on my decibel level, just the high 30s. So I, I'm plateauing, so which means I'm about halfway there. So now I'm going to keep on going and shorten my distances a little bit more. I gotta get this thing to get into the ground with this frost in the ground. We got around a 40 decibel level. So tell me to go forward. about the same about a 42 low 40s high 30s still telling me to go forward now I'm going up I'm around 48 to 50 decibel level go forward signal uh, the signal's gone up a little bit we're at 53 decibels and it's telling us to go forward. So since we're getting higher in our decibel levels, we know we're getting closer and closer to it. So let's take one right here. And now we got a 77 decibel level. We gotta be really close to it now. It's, that's pretty high. And then it goes a little bit further. And now the arrow flip flopped, telling him to go back. He's got a 71 decibel level, so he splits his distance in half. Now he's telling him to go forward with a 67 decibel level. Forward. And he's got a 1920 right there. He's got to be right on it. Now it's this way, one inch that way. You know, it's going to tell you exactly where it's at down to the end. If you're operating without a locate, can you go? Yep. Now that he's found it, across? he found it this way. So now he's going to go ahead and go this way and try to triangulate it. And when the X marks the spot. It's telling him to go forward. Now it's telling him to go back that way. Now forward, so now he can draw himself a line this way and draw himself a line that way, and you know right where it is.
if you want, you could also <clears throat> just hit this right button here and go into locate mode and locate it out. Batteries just went dead, but you could locate it out and then just hit the right button twice more and go back into A-frame mode. Or you can just unplug it if you wanted to, and that way you'll get a depth reading to show up. And so after you found the fault this way, you can go ahead and find it, locate it. It's right there, and it's measuring two foot, one inch deep, so you know right where to dig and how deep it is. What if you go in what mode for that? Uh, just regular 8 kilohertz. Since we're using 8 kilohertz for fault locating, 8 kilohertz can be used for line locating too. It's a little wobbly, I don't know if you hear that, but it's still going to give you a signal and it's going to give you a depth reading. That, that depth reading is always there, you don't have to show Right, to once it. you get close to it, the depth will show up automatically. It's a pretty simple unit. You know, we had a 70 some decibel reading here. Uh, we have when we originally done it back on the ground rod, it was around a 90 decibel reading. Well, the end of this cable is probably faulted a little bit too. It's probably uh, um, giving you a little bit of a decibel reading at the end. But you always want to make sure the ends of the cables are up in open air. You want to isolate both ends and so, so you can uh, um, find the fault. What is it? Loop back around? Or is this the one that Schwer put in?